Hello biology students, today we're going to be talking about non-Mendelian genetics when Mendel's rules don't quite work. All right, this is our new topic. Let's begin. Our first pattern of inheritance that's called non-Mendelian is this new term, which you should make sure you bold or highlight in your notes, incomplete dominance. What is incomplete dominance? It is when neither allele is completely dominant over the other. So not all genes have alleles that are only dominant or recessive. So it's not quite either, right? It's not dominant, it's not recessive, which is pretty bizarre. Yeah, and that's kind of how I feel about it at first usually. Huh, how can it not be dominant? Well, that's why we call it incomplete dominance. Let's learn more about it. So the hybrid, the heterozygous, is going to result in an intermediate or blending. I would really circle this word blending of the two homozygous phenotypes. Let's learn an example. The color in snapdragon flowers. So there can be snapdragons that are red and snapdragons that are white. And when they mate, they make pink. That's pretty weird. If it was Mendelian genetics, there would be either all red, all white, or some of them would be red and other ones would be white. But this is a blend. That is so different. It's a blend. And the blend is the heterozygous or hybrid version. So because this is so different, we can't use regular uppercase and lowercase lettering. So we're going to have to use a different allele notation. Our allele notation is going to be one allele is going to be a capital letter and the other allele is going to be a capital letter with a prime symbol. A prime symbol is just an apostrophe. So in our snapdragon example, we had red, which we're going to use big R, big R for dominant. And then we also are going to have white. This is R prime, R prime. R prime, R prime. Now we could have done it the other way around with W's here and W prime, W prime here. These are our two homozygous versions. What will pink be? The hybrid, the heterozygous version, where one letter is the normal R and the other ones R prime. Now, does it matter if I write my R prime first or second? No, it doesn't matter, although usually we write the R prime second because this would get kind of in the way. So let's do a Punnett square. Let's cross two pink snapdragons. So here's our parental cross. We don't need to write a key right now because we already know what each thing represents. We just had our key written down. If it was a new word problem, we'd write a key. We'll do our cross, where we write our parents on the outside, and we fill on the inside, just like how we do normal Punnett squares, where this is our first one, here's our next one, here's our next one where we bring down the R and across the R prime, and our last box down the R prime, across the R prime. Now, this is awesome. It wasn't that different than doing normal Punnett squares. The only thing that's different is we have different allele notation because we don't have a recessive version and our hybrid is pretty different. So the next step, just like before, is doing our ratios, finding our genotype and phenotype ratios. So our genotype ratio, right, we had 25% uh, big R, big R, 50% the hybrid, and 25% the R prime, the R prime. We could have easily written this as ratios, one, two, one. Our phenotype ratio is also gonna be interesting because instead of when we had just two phenotypes, like tall or short, we have three phenotypes for incomplete dominance. We have white, pink, or red. So I have in this situation, the offspring one, would have been white, okay, 25%, 50% pink or two pink, and one red. Very similar to how we used to do things. All right, so that's incomplete dominance. It's when we have a blend, when white and red mix to make pink. 
The other version of weird patterns of inheritance that we're going to talk about today is codominance. Notice that I've drawn the phrase codominance, not pink, but every other letter is red or white. That's a hint at what kind of way this will work. Here, both alleles are dominant. That's our definition of codominance. Both are dominant. Hmm. Do you think they're going to be willing to blend? I don't think so. The hybrid, or their heterozygous condition, is going to show both of the two homozygous phenotypes equally. It's going to show both things. They're both going to be present. No blending. So our major example is roan cows. Say roan. So cows usually are kind of white and brown. We're going to say brown is kind of a reddish brown. All right? But we don't get pink cow when we mate those two. That would be so cute, strawberry milk cow. No, we get a speckled or spotted cow that has both the red and the white present. It's not a pink cow. So this is codominance. When I have spotting, or I can equally see both of the dominant homozygous versions in my hybrid. It really tends to look like spotted individuals. Co means together. I see them both together in the hybrid. That's different than incomplete dominance when it was a blend and I no longer can see the white or the red anymore. Let's do our allele notation. Since this is different than normal inheritance and it's different than incomplete dominance, we need to have totally different allele notation. We're going to use a capital letter that's called a base letter to represent stuff. And we're going to have the raised capital letter represent one of the codominant alleles and a different base, same base letter with a different, let's just look at it. You'll get it, but you might want to write down this part because it'll make sense after we look at the examples. So here's our example. We have base letter C to represent cow or color. That's this capital letter. Okay, that's a base letter, and then we have a raised letter. The raised letter is uppercase for white. What do you think it will be for our red cow? Yeah, exactly. So again, I have this base letter, and I have a raised letter, R. So I say this is CWCW, CRCR. -C -R. That's how I can say it. What do you think my hybrid roan cow will be? CRCW, you could write it CWCR, you can flip them, that's fine. We write it this way usually because it's alphabetical order. Alrighty, now that we get our allele notation, let's do a practice problem. Let's cross our two roan cows. Very similar scenario. I'm going to use my parent genotypes to make a Punnett square. Just like normal Punnett squares, I'm going to bring the letters down and bring letters across. Again, I write things usually in alphabetical order, although it wouldn't be inaccurate to write the CW and then the CR. And now I'm done. And now I can do my phenotype and genotype ratios. So here's kind of what happened. I crossed two grown cows. Here's what I would have gotten visually. So I can write them as percentages or pure ratios. So I get 25% CWCW, 50% CRCW, 25% CRCR. I could have said 1, 2, 1. It is very important that you label what each number or percentage means. Because if you just write 1, 2, 1 or 25, 50, 25, I don't know what is each. You have to include this information here in white. My phenotype ratio is very similar. I have three different phenotypes and they actually correspond to the genotypes. So my ratios are the same. So wonderful job. We're going to practice the difference between incomplete and codominance in class. Just remember that incomplete was a blend to pink. Not always pink, but it's a blend. And this is when I can see both options. We'll practice a lot together. Bye.